Good morning and happy Tuesday, my friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here with some extra crazy hair this morning. Oh, and my camera's all mirrored. Woohoo! I'm so excited. So I took some time yesterday to finish up the cover of my journal, and then I flip-flopped it over onto my desk into some paint. So I think she might still have a little bit of touch-up to do, but I'm pretty happy with this cute sweet little journal cover that I made on canvas board and then I'm going to show you how to insert pages using a no sew tab style binding. So welcome if you're brand new here I'm Dr. Manette Riordan. and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette where we are all about using art as a tool and practice for personal growth and self-discovery. I love painting my way to the inner knowing of who I am. I often use my art and journaling practices as a way to connect to intuition and problem solving and all the other things that we need to work on in our very busy, busy lives. Good morning, Yvonne, and welcome. Delighted to be here with you all today. And so this month I decided to create a, an affirmations journal and I am doing that just simply using two pieces of 5x7 inexpensive canvas board from Michaels. This is the front and the back cover so eventually it's going to have this nice chunky cover on it and as I was deciding what it was that I wanted to create I started to really think about I don't know how long I want this to be. A lot of times when you make a book, there's, you know, a certain number of signatures or pages in the journal, and I wanted something that I could continue to add to the journal. So I'm going to use a simple no sew tab style binding. I'm going to actually set the back cover aside, and when I feel like the journal is complete, then I will add the back cover of this journal. So today I want to show you how I would put the signatures in and it'll probably be a pretty short quick video and then tomorrow I want to start actually working in the journal. So I made some signatures and they're about the same size as my cover. They're five by seven sheets of paper and I have a couple of different types of mixed media paper so these came from a 7x10 notepad, which was perfect. All I had to do was fold them in half. And, you know, they might be a little big for the journal. If you're fussy and picky, you can trim these a quarter inch all the way around so they tuck inside. But, you know, I kind of love things that are going to stick out and hang out of my journal. So I'm not being fussy about having them inside. And then as I was looking around my stash of different papers, I remembered that I had this canvas pad. This is just an inexpensive canvas pad, Artist Loft from Michaels. But it has nice canvas paper in it. And I'm like, well, that might be fun. I could sew on it. I could paint on it. And it's thin enough to add to a book. So I've also included a couple of signatures of this beautiful canvas paper. You can see all the almost like a linen texture there. And I'm curious what the back side of this is going to be like to paint on. And these I did trim down to five by seven. So I have two different types of mixed media paper, some canvas paper, and all of these are seven by 10. They're seven by 10 and they're simply folded in half. And then I just use the handle of a pair of scissors because I couldn't find my bone folder to just to smooth out those creases. And then I remembered that I had a bunch of these sacred circle designs from our Mindful Patterns program that I accidentally printed double-sided and I didn't want to toss them. They're not as good for coloring when they're double-sided. So I figured I would just stick these in here. These even already have some affirmations on them. I really love this particular design. And good morning, Julie. And here and now is where, where my power is. I love this affirmation. So again, these are trimmed to 7 by 10 to fit my book. I'm simply going to fold them in half. 
and then using a bone folder, I saw someone recommending a butter knife, or even just the handle of a pair of scissors works great. I want to get a nice flat crease in these signatures. So I've got cardstock, mixed media paper, and canvas paper. I love a journal that has a variety of different types of papers to experiment with. It's a great way to play with different substrates and see what it is that you love. I love this affirmation. I am alive in the moment. Every interaction I have today is valuable. That's a good one too. And even if I wanted to, so I'm being kind of curious as I'm sitting here, I might want to, not all the pages have to be the same, and I kind of like these affirmations. And I'm, you know, if it's this way in the journal, I could paint beside it. But what if some of these, I just made them a little bit shorter, and I'm going to have some fun, long, skinny pages, and maybe that affirmation is going to go on the inside. So I think on a couple of these, maybe I'm going to trim these off. And we'll just play with that and see what happens because everything is simply an experiment on the path. All right. I kind of like having some of those shorter pages. I almost wish I'd done some longer. Okay, so there's one. You can see that one is a tad longer on purpose because I didn't want to cut off any of the edges of the design. And I have to decide if I want that, if I'm okay with that sticking out above my book or not. So that one's going to stick out a little bit. And this is going to make a nice chunky book. But as I mentioned at the beginning, I might want to add pages to this. I don't know how many affirmations I want to add. And I kind of like the idea of having a journal that I continue to grow with. And the nice thing about using the tab style binding I'm going to show you and these canvas boards is that I don't have to put it all together in the moment. But I'm thinking this is going to probably be just about the right size. We'll see. So let's see. I ended up with, dun, 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 dun. there's one signature already in there. We're going to put that cover. Sorry about that bump in my camera. Super happy with how the cover came out. I finished it up this morning. I added some yesterday. I added some today. Unfortunately, I turned it upside down in some wet paint, so it might still have a little touch-up to do. But by the time I'm done, it's going to have all kinds of probably extra paint all over it anyway. But she came out pretty cute. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen signatures. And most of the time when you're making books, you are tucking pages inside of each other like so to be stitched together in order to create signatures. But in the case of this tab style journal, we are going to work with one signature at a time, which makes it really the best opportunity for being able to just add pages as um, as many pages as you want. So this could get pretty junk chunky or it could be pretty thin. So we're going to do this tab style binding. I'm using some inexpensive white gaffer's tape. This is actually a, a plumber's tape, but it's a fabric tape. Canvas tape works great. Uh, I have a nice really thick black one. My silly cat was chewing on this. So that one, this one has like cat chewed holes in it. I don't know why this was exciting to chew on. So I have a really heavy duty one I got at uh, a hardware store. This one I ordered on Amazon and it's nice and thin. It's super sticky. It's perfect for this tab style binding. Now if you're a perfectionist you can use scissors and trim this all up. But if you're like me I just tore the tape because it's all going to get painted over. And I already know what I'm going to do on the inside cover. I want to print a picture of me that I love, and it's going to go in this cover journal because this is a positive affirmations journal. So every time I open the journal, who do I need to be looking at? I need to be looking at me, right? This is the whole focus of this book, is about my own personal growth and self-discovery. 
and I'm trying to get more and more comfortable with, you know, looking at pictures of myself. So the more I use them in the artwork, artwork, more comfortable I become, become. So I started with a piece of this canvas paper here, which I'm super excited to work with. I almost made the whole journal out of that, but decided to try some different things. And you can see there's an alternating, good morning, Leslie. Oh my gosh, only two more sleeps till I get to see you live and in person. So exciting. So I'm doing a tab style journal. It's almost a little bit like weaving. Yes, exactly, Julie. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Julie's an amazing photographer that helps women really, especially women who really resist having their picture taken, really fall in love with themselves on camera. She does beautiful work. So we're going to do a tab style. I've got five tabs here. You can see three of those tabs are on the front of this journal and two got tucked behind. That was how I attached it to the cover. So I actually, in fact, let me just unattach these so you can see what I did here. We'll just pretend like we're doing this all from the beginning. So I've got five pieces of tape. I've got three of them on the inside cover of my book and two of them in the in-between spaces that are tucked around. So these, what I love about this canvas paper is that uh, this tape is coming right up, but I've got two that are tucked around this first signature. And I'm going to just take this and make sure I get it up nice and flat against that cover. I think I did it this way time and found it was easier. Of course, I've tried this a couple of times to make sure I'm getting it working. And I wanted that to just be kind of centered there and kind of even with the back of this board. It's a pretty thick canvas board here. And this one is done a little bit different than some of the other ones just because I needed it to flip open this way. So I'm going to just mix and match some of these pages. I think I want maybe one of these shorty ones. And one of the things that I want is to make sure when I'm doing this that my pages are super flush. That will help us get a really nice, even, flat book. So you can see I've got my two tabs here. I already have some paint on them. And I'm figuring out, is that what I want? So these really need to be going the other way, I think. So it was a little fussy with that cover one. So I'm going to play here for a minute. No, that's right. Second guessing myself. I've made a bunch of these. My uh, first saw this from my friend Andrea, who saw it on TikTok. I love this gaffer's tape because it's super easy to tear. And this process is a little bit goes faster if you spend some time tearing some of that tape in advance. And I am not doing that only because I was distracted painting on the cover and didn't make time to do these. So we're going to get this weaving going, not worried about covering up that design. I'm getting this nice and flat from the bottom here so that I'm going to start building up that book. Good morning, Kay. And then these tabs are just going to wrap around. So here we have signature number one, signature number two, and I love these big open spreads. So Kay, I had a bunch of the designs from Sacred Circles that I was getting ready to mail and I accidentally printed them double-sided so I'm just going to use them for some journal making but I'm thinking it would be fun to make a journal out of colored ones as well. So I'm just going to continue to build this in this way. So this one is going to need uh, five strips on it so we make sure that we're getting it all tucked together and the tape is going to go different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and tear that tape. It's interesting. It likes to tear on the diagonal. 
maybe I'll make an effort to, even if I try to do it straight, it doesn't want to do straight, but you can see I'm just getting five pieces going here. Making sure not to make them too wide because I want to have room for all five. Again, I'm making sure that this is nice and flush. And these two are going to fold around, so I actually want to put these two on first. So this is a little backwards from how it's normally done, but I wanted to, it was how I figured out how to make sure that I was getting it that cover piece attached like I wanted it to. So they're all the pieces of tape are facing down, but these two are going to wrap around for the next signature, right? These two are going to um, face upwards so that they go on the next signature. And I'm going to see if it's easier maybe to do it from this side. It's a little fidgety. I wouldn't say it's faster than sewing. I actually love sewing my signatures and stitching them into a book. But what I also know is that, or what I decided with this book, is I wanted to be able to add pages as I go, right? I don't want to be limited by the number of pages. So we have this nice one. We even have some little bit of overlap here. This tape is more or less removable if you rub it down super hard you know that you won't be able to pull it up but it is you are able a little bit to work with it which I also like and this doesn't have a, a brand name in it it has a BC on the inside but I just searched for white gaffers tape and this is a nice wide super wide when it's two inches so you know I can make it narrower this way as well as needed all right, so this is coming together. So let's see. We've got a piece of canvas paper, one of our sacred circle designs, a piece of mixed media paper. So I think I'm just going to have some fun alternating these. All right, so we have our two tabs going this way. So I'm going to want three tabs going the opposite way. And I think I can make them a little thinner. I don't need to make them quite this thick. This tape is funny. It has this sort of mind of its own for how it wants to be torn. But I do love the problem with cutting tape with your scissors. Why I love that you can tear it is that when you cut tape with your scissors, it gets your scissors all gummy. Okay. So this one is going to be a little bit of a weaving. So this one's going over. The other one's going under. So let's pull those up there. I've never been a weaver. My aunt was a weaver. And as a kid, I loved being at her house and getting sometimes to help on big projects she was working on on her big loom and a couple of times for different projects now I've been doing some paper weaving and I've forgotten how soothing weaving is it's kind of like hand stitching right and then we're just gonna pull that down and then I'm gonna come back in with my scissors periodically and just or a bone folder or whatever you got I don't know where I put my bone folder I need like 14 of them because they disappear. And I want to make sure those are nice and flat in there. So I love that I'm getting this all nice and even. I'm okay if some of those pages are sticking out at the top and some of them are going to stick out on the side. But I want the bottom and the left side, the binding side, to be pretty flat in this journal. So this is looking pretty good. I'm going to add a few more pages, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and start maybe painting on one of these pages. I'm super excited about playing with this canvas paper. I might become addicted to journals with canvas paper in them, just saying. All right. Get some more tape going.
And I'm going to do this long one, I think, right here in the middle. I swear my cat coming down the stairs sounds like a whole herd of elephants all by himself. Running down the stairs. He's come to say good morning to everyone. Still trying to decide what to do with the kitties during the retreat because they are very, very friendly and will be up on the table in everyone's artwork. So they might be spending some extra time in the garage this week, which they won't be super happy about, but we'll figure it out. All right. So I'm thinking I'm going to have one more flap that's going to, or one more piece that's going to tuck here to wrap in that next one, or it might not be needed. Let me see. So when I decide to do these things, you guys are getting to see the experimentation and the making it all work. So I think this one can have the five pieces on it, and that will be perfect. Anybody else watching love making handmade books? I know, Julie, you're new to it. You'll have to come over sometime. I love uh, helping people make handmade books, and I have all the goodies. We'll have to have a, a book-making party at some point, a journal-making party. But who else loves making books? Leslie, do you like making books? Or Kay, you guys do all the crafty things. And what are other people working on this morning? I know it's not always super exciting to watch somebody put a book together, but we will be back to art making very soon. Okay, so this one's going to go on the underside. I'm going to make sure we get that right in between the other pieces so they're not all sticking together. Okay, I'm going to let those go stick under up a little bit. Again, turn this back upside down. Make sure those are nice and sticky. And again, the, the secret is to get them super flush and super flat with the, the like right next to that piece before. I put those on the wrong side. All right, here's what I love about this tape. <laughs> you might uh, change your mind about that after the kitties have, you know, jumped up in your paint, but they will come spend all day in people's laps quite happily. All right, so let's get this one going on the right side here again. Just like weaving, it's figuring out what's the up and what's the down, and it all works out perfectly in the end. That one's a little crooked. No problem. Okay, let's see. How about another piece of canvas paper? And this one isn't quite as long. And then where's one of those other little things? And this is such a fast way to make a journal. Like I love making stitched journals. They, the process definitely takes longer. I had fun. I made everyone journals for my retreat this weekend. So I'm super excited to share blank journals with everybody that they're going to get to get messy in. All right, so again, I'm going to do, 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 get that one stuck on there, and that one stuck on there. You're going to go up that way. I am definitely not an expert bookmaker. Everything is practice. And it's going to be really interesting in this journal on these pages that have canvas paper on one side 
and something else, the mixed media or cardstock on the other side. Interesting, very interesting to see what it's going to be like to paint on those. But we have those pages nice and flat. We have a mostly neat book. The tape is all tucked in there nicely, so I'm really loving how this book is coming together. I have a variety of papers to paint on. Super simple. Love all the different designs that are in here. And I can just keep going and adding pages as I go. And I don't need to add the back cover, right? I don't need to add the back cover. But if I were going to, I still have a number of signatures to add in here. If I were going to add the back cover of my journal, we would just use that same process here with three pieces of tape and just hinge that journal right on. So we end up with a really nice journal. That's, that one's already feeling pretty chunky, but this one's wanting to be pretty full and chunky. And this needs some white on it. It doesn't feel quite done, but it's one of those things I'll just keep adding to it probably as I'm painting along. So maybe fixing up her nose a little bit. So I love when you have some distance from a piece and then you can go back and go, okay, that's not quite it. So you can keep working on it. So again, this page is going to be super, super simple. It's going to have this cute little frame on it and a photo of me. And now I get to decide what do I want to do on this very first page here? Do I even want to skip that first page and go to a big page? And I love these affirmations. This one says, every interaction I have today is valuable. Every interaction I have today is valuable. It doesn't say every interaction I have today is good, right, or positive. Some of them can be challenging, but it does say that I see all of them as an opportunity for growth. Okay, so every interaction I have today is valuable. And this is a great one for me to focus on today. I'm driving down to the Denver area to teach an abstract watercolor class, all packed and ready to go for that. I'm super excited about it, but I'm thinking about where would I start with an, with an affirmation like this? And I think the place I would start is the place that I always start, which is with some journaling. I'm trying to decide where do I want to, I love this design, it's so pretty. This one might just get colored. And actually it would be really fun to have some of these be tabs. So what I love about a new journal, infinite possibility, right? Infinite possibility. There's so many different things that I can do. And I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. What if all the informations were tabbed on the outside? And when you looked at it, you could just flip through those tabs. Well, that's a fun idea that I wouldn't have thought of unless I had chopped off that piece of paper off of there. But if every interaction I have today is valuable, the other thing I like about this journal while I'm thinking about that information is the one of the other thoughts that I had is sometimes, you know, it's hard to work in a journal and you want to be able to add pages to a journal. So what I love about this tab style is I could work on this signature, right, this one folded page, which is three or four pages depending how you look at it. And then after it's painted, I can add it in. So I'm loving the, the potential and the possibility of this. Definitely feels like it needs some little taggy bits hanging out the top. Really liking the idea of having tabs for each of the affirmation pages as well. Loving that I could add some stitching here. I'm going to have a photo here. This one almost feels like it wants to be kind of an introduction page also. So I'm thinking... I'm going to take a few minutes and maybe just get some paint down on the page. And I'm going to think about this 
idea of every interaction I have today is valuable, but I don't know exactly the direction that I want to go. So the only thing I can do is to really paint and write my way through that. So I'm going to neaten this up. I'm going to use it as a tab. I like it to be a little neater. I might take it over to my paper cutter and trim it up a little bit because I can use that gaffer's tape on there and make this cute little tab. Okay, really liking the tab idea. I love that idea, Julie. It's kind of what I was thinking. And I really loved, uh, I, I am alive in this moment, right? There's nothing that's more true in this and that inspires, right? Uh, more gratitude than just remembering that I am alive in this moment. So maybe that's going to be the, the entry point, which as soon as I say that, I get a visual image of sunshine, right? Shining in, in the moment. So thank you, Julie, for that inspiration. And then again, I would do that same thing here. Trim this up on the paper cutter, get it nice and neat. And have that be a cute little tab on the side. All right. Thank you, Julie. Just the direction and inspiration that I needed. And I intuitively grabbed a, a palette. I grabbed some little tubes this morning. This is one of my favorite palettes. I grabbed a couple of metallics. It felt like fun to get maybe some metallics going in here. Huh. Interesting. I wasn't really thinking about it beforehand. But that palette is sort of aligned with this one because I have my magenta here too. So this palette is going to end up matching, which is kind of cool and again, totally unintentional. So I'm going to do get some words on the page with my Sharpie here. I liked what Julie said. It's an affirmation of me. I'm going to write, I am alive in this moment. And you'll notice as I paint and I go along here that the, the tape, it takes the, the paint, but it takes it very differently than this canvas does, right? So we've got two different color blacks, so already going to create some interesting marks on there. And I think one of the things I've really been sitting with is, is just this idea of I am present. Because the magic happens when I'm fully present, not when I'm distracted or overwhelmed or feeling like, oh my gosh, there's too much to do. The mindfulness of this creative process happens when I'm just right here, right now, on this page. There's nowhere to go nothing to do except be with what is here now. And I'm going to go ahead and put some gesso down on this page. And I'm going to grab a piece of paper to put between the pages so I keep that paint from gluing all the edges of my pages together. And I'm not worried about this one. I haven't printed a picture yet. This is all going to get covered over. And let's see, I am looking for my nice catalyst wedge or one of my scrapers, which I used yesterday. So I'm in between sides of the studio right now. So of course, you know, I don't know where anything is at the moment. So we'll just use a brayer because that what was there. And this canvas paper is pretty nice, but it is almost like a raw linen. And it definitely, you can paint directly on it, but I like to give it a little bit more body by just adding that little bit of gesso on there. You can see I'm not covering up all of the words. And interestingly, it's curling up when it gets wet with the paint. So just noticing nothing good or bad about that. Clean that brayer off. It's amazing how much paint brayers can hold. 
All right, okay, so what I'm thinking is that I may have to come in and let this dry a little bit and keep it tacked down. I always have binder clips floating around. Binder clips are a great tool to have in your studio. These happen to be pretty ones. So I'm not going to wait for this to dry. I'm just going to go ahead and start layering some paint in here. And I'm going to start with my cool color, which is my blues. And they're going to mix with that gesso a little bit. There's not a lot of difference between those two, which is interesting. So I'll get some different tones as well by having that mix with some of that white paint. Again, just noticing what does it do differently. Yeah, not a lot of difference between those two tubes of blue. Interesting. And I'm thinking maybe I'm going to add some more collage on this canvas just because I've got this. Uh, or we'll see how we, I feel when it gets painted up, but noticing these tabs are really standing out against the canvas, which is just interesting. Nothing's wrong. Just noticing I don't love it. I want this to be just a little bit darker. I left my big bucket of paints on the other side of the studio, so it's forcing me to use a very limited palette. And I'm going to come in with some of that magenta and mix some magenta in. Because, you know, I get into these patterns where I tend to get obsessed with colors. And if I let these mix together, my, I'm going to get a beautiful lavender. Because I'm working with all wet paint, nothing's dry here. If I wanted that magenta to really stand out on its own, I would have to do it in a space that was really white or not mix, right? Not mix. And I love having this canvas paper in here because I can really build up those colors quite a bit. They look so dark on the screen. That's so interesting. So if I move them up closer, you can see like it's very this sort of lilac color, which is appropriate because all the lilacs are blooming here right now and they are beautiful. And every time you go for a walk, you get to breathe all that in. Now I'm wanting to maybe bring back in a little bit more white, brighten that up a little bit more. It's feeling a little bit dark. And I'm just going to use my gesso because it's what's at hand. Huh. And I'm going to end up with a lot of lavender on the page. And I'm going to want to bring some more of that blue back. I feel like I've lost some of that blue. So let me get this nice and dry. And then I want to bring some blue. So it's getting kind of moody, which is interesting. But I think what I'm wanting is maybe something a little bit more bright. So bear with me while I get this nice and dry. Noticing things take a little bit longer to dry on the canvas paper than they do on other paper because it soaks up a lot of that paint. Maybe a little finger painting is in order this morning. Especially because if this is an affirmation of me, it's important to have me in the page. Interesting, so I'm sort of, I've got this like little 
sort of cloudy bit opening up here but definitely not enough blue on the page so let's get some more blue happening and by the time all this gets piled up then I'm not even noticing the tape over here anymore loving the richness of the colors and so thinking this is just going to be a simple abstract page with the words I am over the top of the page because when I think about working with affirmations what's so powerful about the process is the idea of what's up buddy is the idea of we're using these I am statements and when we think about affirmations you know a lot of people live by them other people say they don't work and simple repetition is not what's needed oh, I'm loving the, the contrast of that it's probably going to mix with the blue and we'll get some maybe some interesting greens happening here just a nice fun abstract page building up the depth and the darkness right I am the light in the shadow maybe that's what needs to go in here it's I am the light and the shadow but the thing about affirmations is that you have to feel them you have to believe them you can't just repeat them by rote you have to add energy to them and what I love about painting or Zentangle or watercolor right like putting color and imagery to an affirmation helps us to feel more connected and really embody the meaning of the affirmation when it's just you know if you were writing it down I used to you know in college I would just like write all these lines of affirmations and the the problem with that is I wasn't feeling them like it was like being uh, given the task and detention of writing lines right it's time to change my brush up and get maybe a different shape and a different mark going in here let's try a, a nice big round brush and see what's different always harder to paint with a kitty in my lap but this one Diego he will just sit still here for a little while unlike his sister who's a wiggle worm and so when we journal about how an affirmation makes us feel when we visualize a color a symbol and connect that to an affirmation all of a sudden the intentionality changes right we believe it's possible or we're present to any resistance we might be feeling or the self-doubt what I love about the one today um, I am alive in this moment is that it's provable right it's true I am alive I am sitting here talking to you today I am alive grateful to be alive grateful that uh, I think we're supposed to have some sunshine today it's been very rainy I'm gonna come in with just a little bit of this copper it's pretty transparent just building up the color learning to play with brushes so I am the light and the shadow is what is emerging out of this page and I think I want a little bit more of this magenta to create a little bit of more shadow maybe even it's gonna need some black in here and I'm still using the same brush but I'm using it in a different way I'm holding that up straight instead of pressing it down flat again just getting some different marks on the page I woke up this morning and I made homemade granola for the retreat yesterday and my house still smelled so yummy all right right now it feels like a busy page and I think I'm at that point where it maybe just needs to have some color 
rolled over the whole thing or maybe it's going to end up being a little bit of redactive painting where I'm going to come in and create some kind of shape and leave the and maybe I'm going to have a box in the middle for the affirmation and let the rest of it stay a little wild and crazy that feels good but first I'm going to get this nice and dry one more time So I'm feeling curious what would happen if I just painted this bright yellow over the top of the whole thing. So I'm just going to go for it. And install my little tiny brayer. All right, I can't reach my tiny brayer because I have a giant cat in my lap. I know. And I know that magenta is not completely dry. Yes, sweetie. Okay, that feels better. It feels brighter, but it's also feeling like that's not quite spreading like I want it to. So that's what I get for cleaning up because then I can't find anything when I clean up. What I'm wanting is one of my scrapers, but this is here, so you know everything in the studio is usable. And I'm wanting to just move that blob around a little bit. This has a nice metal edge on it. Works great. I'm a big fan of using what I have. Okay, so now I have kind of a crazy, muddy page happening here. Let's see if it's lying down flat. And you can see why I tend to want to put a page in between because now I'm also getting that color happening on other pages, which is just fine. But I'm thinking this definitely, it's time for a layer of white. And again, it feels like I'm painting my way through the light and shadow. This one is just about All right, my inner child loves pounding things up and down. I'm like, okay, that was fun. Maybe I could just do that for a while. All right, buddy, off you go. Scooch. They're such little love bugs, but they are definitely annoying little things. Get this little brayer. I don't need to cover up all the paint. Interesting, that's making my tape pop out a little bit more over here. Just noticing it's not good or bad. Hmm. Now I'm seeing all this gorgeous color and thinking this would be really fun to add some stitching to the edge of these pages. So as always, just sort of following the path of my own intuition. I have no destination in mind. It's kind of fun to just see where this is all taking me. And what I'm wanting is to, so I'm noticing that the paint on the, the canvas doesn't move as much as I want it to. So maybe I'm going to add some water here. And just thin it up a little bit. Mm, got some interesting color happening. And then I'm going to press some of that water off. And let's see, I, did I have one more piece of that canvas paper in here? I did. So what happens when I just take this So now I have a page that has some color and texture on it for the next thing. But I've also pushed back some of that color here and I'm moving it around, which feels really good. 
And maybe I want to do that even a little bit more and pull out just a little bit more of that color and that wet off of here. Super fun working with this canvas paper. And that's looking gorgeous already all by itself. So now I have a more interesting page. Again, just sort of sitting with these, you know, depths. I am the light. I am the shadow. Definitely have a lot of that going on. It could even be a little bit more white, but before I do anything to it, um, I'm going to get it nice and dry again. So it's feeling like it still maybe wants some little edges of a little bit of darkness on here. And then it's going to have I am the light and the shadow written in here because that's going to be perfect next to my selfie on the other side. It's going to capture those I am statements. It doesn't need a lot of this. And then I'm also thinking I might grab a needle and thread, take this up for some evening work when I'm upstairs, and add some slow stitching to the edges of the pages as well. I've never done an art journaling process on canvas paper before, so I'm just noticing the differences, not good or bad, just noticing. Noticing how the, the paint, you know, reacts differently to the, to the tape as well. So giving it almost like a little frame of that magenta in there. This is all paint. I haven't added any mark making to this. I think once I add, uh, it's going to have one more layer of white is what I'm feeling. But once I add the words, then I'm probably going to come in with my Puskas and add a little bit as well. But that will be for another day. Let's see if we can get a little bit more paint up there. And this is where I really want that scraper because it just gets the paint on so nice and thin. But I'm going to try just, this is a super cheap chip brush. And it can really work great to create interesting texture and in working. I love them on canvas because they really smoosh that paint into the canvas. And now I feel like I'm starting to get some dark around the edges, some light in the center. So you can't quite see all the layers, the depths that are there, but I know they're there. And maybe just a little bit of that yellow in there. Brighten that up even more. And what I'm noticing is I'm not loving this tape on this page. On other pages, it won't bother me. So I'm going to just come in with a piece of that gaffer's tape and just cover up this whole edge here, or maybe even some paper tape. I'm not sure yet, but um, something's going to change over here because today it's bugging me, which is interesting. It doesn't normally bug me. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to drop some water. You guys know this is one of my favorite techniques is just to drop some water let it sit on there for a minute and I'm just gonna it's gonna help me push some of this color back and maybe bring some of those under layers 
And it just, again, it feels completely different to be doing my art journaling process on Canvas. I approach the Canvas generally mostly the same way, but just noticing the differences. So, which is great, because then I'll know what to do the same or different the next time. And I've never tried this technique on Canvas, so we're going to see if it works. It does. So just pick up some of that color just a little bit and just get a little bit more interesting texture happening in there. And then what would happen? Mm, got the gut gaffer's tape stuck to itself instead of to the paper. Okay, we made a huge mess out of that one. Let's try that again. And for some reason, this is just going to feel a little bit neater on this page. And it's wanting that neatness. Don't ask me why, but I'm just going to trust that this is what's needed. Don't know if it's going to get some color on it or not. But somehow it's just what that page, let's see, we're going to have this over here. <laughs> Interesting transition there. Even if I tried to paint it, it's not going to get painted the same. So it might get something maybe collagey or fabricy over here. Not sure, but I definitely like it better without all the little bits of tape. And then I'm going to come in. Almost done here. And again, thank you, Julie, for the inspiration this morning. So I am, and I like my own handwriting. If you don't like your own handwriting, get some letter stamps. Or you could print it out. Paint's still a little wet in there. I'm sort of scratching through. So before I add the ink on here, I will walk away and scratch for a long time. And I'm starting with pencil just for placement, right? Because if I get it on there and I don't love it, then I can move things around a little more easy. I could paint over the whole thing I, again. I can work on spacing and I can, you know, change things up when I add the ink to it. All right, so almost done. It just needs the ink added. And then maybe I'm going to have some fun with some slow stitching, but at least it feels like we have a really nice cover page. Zentangle with black, good contrast on the tape vertically. Ooh, I love that. That will make some nice contrast on the page there. Great idea. You guys are just full of great ideas this morning. Thank you. <clears throat> Come in just with this big fat sharpie.
Again, just noticing what the Sharpie does on the canvas surface, right? It's not super smooth, even with all those layers of paint. And it won't like it if I, if the surface is still wet. So I can also, so I'm going to get this blacked once and then I may come back over it later with a Posca. But this way I'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see it. What I love about using creative process for personal growth and transformation is that it gives me a place to be the light and the dark, right? Like it definitely is that reminder that the darkness isn't bad, but it is part of me and it is a part of me that needs to be acknowledged. And in working with affirmations, I'm definitely going to run in to both, right? All right, so super happy with how this turned out. It feels like it is on the way. So we've got our affirmations journal. We have some of the signatures put in with room to add more. And we have a nice cover page added with the next page to come. Tomorrow I will finish up this piece and then figure out where I want to go next in the journal. But so appreciative of everyone's input and ideas. And I'm thinking it also needs to have my chop in here, my initials, and a date. So I know when I began this. So this little pen does not love the canvas. All right, and I'm loving Leslie's idea of adding some Zentangle. And because I have the black, I'm thinking I'm going to maybe paint this magenta and then tangle in white over the top to create that little bit of contrast. But uh, love, love, love the ideas. So that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow. Reminder, I will not be here on Thursday this week because I will be getting all set up for my retreat, but thank you so much for joining me for the very beginning of creating our affirmations journal. I will see you all live tomorrow at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Thank you for joining me. This is Dr. Minette, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.